Stephen Curry, thank you very much for joining Cinema Australia. No worries. And my savoury muffin. And the muffin. Yeah, thank it's you can't very forget much. the muffin. Very good. At the Alex Hotel. <laughs> Get into it. Trust me. It's worth it. It's a beautiful hotel. Yep. Uh, so tell us about Hounds of Love. What's it about? Oh, wow. That's a big question, isn't it? Hounds of Love is uh, effectively a psychological thriller about the psychology of codependence and the lengths and the depths that some humans will sink to to retain their perceived position in life. And tell us about your character because it's, it's quite a heavy role. It is a heavy role. John White is a psychopath. He is a loveless uh, human who doesn't have any sense of empathy and who likes to basically rule his home with an iron fist. He has a wife, Evelyn, who he has basically uh, taken under his wing from when she was a teenager and has effectively uh, turned her into as merciless a human as himself. So there, uh, for kicks, they go around the streets and they abduct young women and they do unspeakable things to them under John's guidance. And, uh, I mean, it's no Disney love story. It's no first date movie. If you do take anyone for a first date, there may not be a second. <laughs> How do you sell a film like this to an audience who may be uh, questioning whether they want to see it or not? Look, it's a brutal film. It's a hard watch. This is how I would sell it. Ben Young, it's his first film. He wrote it and directed it. The word that I use with his direction is restraint. He is a brilliant auteur. This film is about, as I say, psychology. Most of the violence, and there is some brutal violence in this film, is unseen, mm, mm. is implied, yeah. happens behind doors, mm. happens behind walls. It is about employing theatre of the mind and respecting the audience, giving the audience the respect to be able to use their imagination to, as to what is happening. And I think that's actually far more impactful. Mm -hmm. The way I would sell it is it's not for everybody. And if you, uh, if you have a strong will and you like films that are made with um, passion, respect and an abundance of talent that Ben Young has, then you will be rewarded. Variety magazine said that brave audiences will be rewarded and that's, I couldn't put it better myself. It's very true. Uh, so this is arguably your most dramatic role since Cloud Street, I'd say. Uh, yeah, I'd say arguably probably my most dramatic role. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean Cloud Street since was, getting was quite suspension dramatic. in year 11. <laughs> um, yeah, look, yeah, it was. It was, it was a very dramatic thing, but, but also, yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely a step above, that's mm. for sure. So was it, how was it being able to sink your teeth into this kind of a role, into such a disturbing character? Uh, amazing. I, you know, it's... It, um, it's such a departure, not just from in terms of characters that I've played, but just from you know from my personality, that it was. I found it very compelling and very. Uh, ben and I worked very hard for a long time on this character in particular, and uh, the idea. I, I'm fascinated by the idea of this guy, who is the king of his domain. The moment he steps his foot over the precipice of his house, mm. he's nothing. Mm. Mm. He's nothing in society, he's a weak human being. Mm. In a, as a classic bully, he only picks on people that he knows he can defeat. Mm. Mm. Uh, which then informs his need to be the king of his domain. He's a OCD, um, he, order is his life. But what he manages to do is he's now created order in his house that is maintained by his wife mm. and she doesn't even know she's doing it but she knows that if the order isn't maintained that's when chaos will ensue yes um he's a horrible human um a human being that i would never like to meet he has every quality of every of the every one of the worst people you could imagine mm. um but he has an ability to affect empathy to affect charm, to affect love, if it gets him what he wants. Yes. Uh, you were cast eight months.
prior to filming. Was it? Oh, yeah, something like about that. About eight months? Yeah, yeah. I was cast eight months. first, yeah. How much does a character like this consume you in that lead-up? Totally, up? totally. And this is the thing, because there were three, four drafts that happened um, subsequent to me being cast in the film. And because Ben was so generous to allow me in on that process to develop the character, uh, the character consumes you. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a character that is a human being first mm. and an evil psychopath second. Mm. He has to be able to... He has to be able to affect those things like charm and empathy to not sell the extremely strong female characters in this film short because if, if he is just a one-note bad guy, then you sell Evelyn short for being with him in the first place. Yes. You sell Vicky, our victim, short for getting in the car. He has to be able to be the person and they walk among us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that can affect the simple human emotions that most of us take for granted but that they don't possess. Mm -hmm. How deep did your research for this uh, character? Very deep. I, more, you know what it was? It was research into um, sociopathy and, psycho and, and, and the idea of the psychopath research into codependence and this film is is uh you know it's inspired by many many true cases mm. and most of these cases that it's inspired by are husband and wife couples who do unspeakable things mm. Mm. the psychology behind that to me is endlessly fascinating and so that's what i wanted to get to the core of is how how does it happen how do you as a psychopathic animal mm. How do you coerce a partner in crime into doing these things? Mm, mm. And you do it through uh, a, a solid knowledge of psychology. So this guy, is he's an actor. Yes. He pretends his mm. entire life. He mm. pretends all these things yeah. to get what he wants. Mm. And they exist, and that was where the research was. If, who are these people? Where do they come from? And the similarities between all of them mm. is remarkable. Yes. Uh, do you go method? Are you a method actor? I don't like method actors. No. Most no. method actors that I've worked with have been <laughs> shit out. Sorry, am I allowed to say that? Can of I say you that? Can. Well, yeah. I, you can. You, now, I'm not saying that all method actors are bad. You know, I mean, let's say uh, Daniel Day Lewis yes. is probably a method actor, and mm. he's amazing. Um, I think, though, I think everyone's got their own method. Mm. Okay, all jokes aside, I think everyone does, but. Um, I don't like affectations in performance mm. and that's what I think a lot of method brings to people who aren't quite good enough to pull off the method mm -hmm. is they end up with all these accoutrements, you know, all these kind of, all these, as I said, affectations mm. to their character which make the audience look at them and say, well, you're acting, you know? And this is the, from day one as an actor, and I was 13 when I started, from day one I had directors telling me to stop acting. Mm. And that's the simple point of it. Right. Some people, you know, and, and I don't denigrate any method at all, I, I really don't, but some people um, need it to build up their characters, mm. right? Mm. Whereas all I, all I strive to do is be researched enough and prepared enough that I know the character and the psychology of the character well enough mm. that I don't need the affectations. Yes. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'd hate to see people, I would hate for people to see me and think, He's acting. Sorry, do you know which way the highway is? Yeah, you're um, chasing a taxi. Yep. Yeah, if you just go straight for three streets. Yep. Take a left, walk to the end of the road and you should find one there. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Hey, hey you sure? Bloody good stuff. I mean, you're more than welcome to call a cab from our place too if you like, that's totally fine.
Uh, last year I spent a little bit of time with Emma Booth down at Cinefest Oz, oh, yeah. and she's an absolute sweetheart. Mm -hmm. What was it like to watch her transform into this mad woman? And I don't really want to call her a mad woman as in her character, but she was madly in love with your character. Mm. She's only human. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, look, she... I just can't say enough about Emma Booth. She, she is so remarkable in this film. Mm. She embodies that character 100% and unflinchingly and uncompromisingly. And her physical transformation is, is one small part of it. It really is. Yes. You look at her, she's a stunningly beautiful woman. Yeah. Right? So they put the wig on her, they put the teeth on her, they put the uh, contact lenses on her, they mottled her skin up, they tried to sort of break her down a bit. She was physically kind of unrecognisable, but that's... That's fine. Mm. And anyone can do that. Right? Yes. Yep. Anyone. Yeah. What she created as a character, as a, as a torn, conflicted, broken character, is remarkable. Mm. I, and I, I, I've said this a few times um, about her performance, and I mean it 100%. I think it is one of the greatest performances mm. I've seen on screen. Yes, yeah. I, I really mean that. Yeah. And Ashley Cummings, again, like, how could you have two performances in one film mm. from two of these brilliant women, Susie Porter in the film as well, yeah. they break your heart mm. Mm. because of their dedication to it, because of their, their, as I say, their unflinching dedication to that character, their knowledge of the character mm. and their... Uh, inner struggle within that character makes them... I cannot take my eyes off them. Mm. And I know that I'm not alone. Yes. If you read any review about this film, mm. it, it talks about that, mm. and rightly so, because yeah. I think those two, three women, in fact, deserve nothing but the highest praise for this, for this film. Uh, I could not speak more highly enough of uh, Ashley's performance. Oh. She, it's just breathtaking. Yep. Uh, tell us a bit about what she was like behind the scenes compared to what she was like in this role. Ashley, Ashley is a beautiful soul. Um, from the word go, she wanted to pay respect to people that this has happened to, mm, mm. to real people. This sort of stuff happens to real people. Yes. Right? Ashley is such a beautiful soul that she refused to sell them short in that performance. Mm, mm. And she succeeds magnificently yes. in doing that. Yeah. She would be mortified, as would any of us be mortified, to think that anyone who has been through anything remotely like this mm. would think that we'd done a caricature, Yes. would think that we had done broad brushstrokes, lazy storytelling, um, with, that we hadn't done enough work mm, on mm, it mm. and Ashley personifies that she's so complete an actress yes so dedicated an actress and so versatile and wonderful and heartbreaking to the point where I was I found it impossible to extricate myself from the emotion of what was happening and what I was doing to her, mm, mm, you know. Mm. It is a character, but you become a character for that moment. Yes. I've never in my life been more absorbed and heartbroken by a performance that I was witnessing at the same time as performing opposite mm, mm. in my entire life. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. I guess that partly answers uh, some of my next question, which is about Katie uh, Moya who was one of the victims of the Bernies. She right. escaped the Bernies. Okay, yep. uh, prior to, uh, about a year ago, she came out in the media saying that uh, Ben Young needs to get his own imagination. He's taking advantage of something that happened to me. Uh, how would you respond to that? Look, I can't speak for Kate. I, I, you know, I don't know her. I've never met her. I would simply say that I think a lot of that might have been based on um, misinformation that she... that. A lot of people had heard that mm. this is about the Bernies. Yes. This is by no means about the Bernies. Mm. Mm. This is uh, the many cases that this is inspired by. The Bernies, you know, it's set in Perth in the 80s. It's, it's impossible to extricate um, from the fact that, yeah, there is a, there is a nod in there yes. to the Bernies, to yeah. the Bernie case, mm. right? Mm. Unavoidable. But this is a fictional piece. This mm. is a fictional piece, as we say, about the psychology behind it. And as such... I would 
implore anyone who thinks it's unnecessary to make this film mm. to see it. Yes. Because I think it's a necessary piece of filmmaking. Mm. It mm. could have been terrible. It's a first-time filmmaker mm. dealing with issues that are so heavy and so awful that it, it, it could and probably should have been a turkey, yeah. right? But it's not. Yeah. And this is, what I, this is what I firmly believe, that I think anyone, and, I, and, I, and this goes for anyone out there at all, who, who is concerned about the reasons behind this, to see the piece of art that Ben Young has made, because mm. it is a- astonishing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Ben... He's a Perth boy. Yes. Uh, we're very proud of him. We're yeah, very as you proud should of be. Film. And he's an absolute superstar of the future. And he's just currently embarking on his first big Hollywood blockbuster. What a sellout. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know why I think he's a sellout? Because he didn't cast me. <laughs> no, no he's, you know, he's, he's on his way. And, and he is now internationally, people are sitting up and going, who is this guy? Yeah. And rightly so. He yes. is a super talent. Yeah. Uh, so, what's next for you? I shan't work again. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> this is it. Uh, yeah. You've reached your peak. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, look, there are a few things. I, I've got a. I'm, I'm writing some stuff. I, I've kind of, after this experience, I've kind of, I've now felt like I want to kind of do a bit more co- comedy stuff and just kind of, I don't know. Comedy is my get out of jail free card. Mm. I, mm. I, I, it's where I came from and, and where I kind of feel most comfortable, I, I suppose. Mm. So, yeah, writing some stuff that may never see the light of day, but kind of saying no to a lot of things at the moment because, because of this film. Um, this film has kind of made me, made me yearn for uh, end results like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't want to, I, I don't want to do films that I... Or show anything, any, any piece of acting that I can't be proud of yes. and like I mean pretty rare that you'd be as proud of a film as we are of this one mm. but it it just I don't know it just makes me realize you can you can hold out I've got two three mouths to feed four mouths to feed in my house um, and they're all human <laughs> and so it's all well and good to say I'm gonna hold out forever but at the same time I would rather you know I would rather uh, not have a, a whole lot of money than um, be doing things purely because I felt I had to. Yes. Well, Stephen Curry, congratulations on the film. Thank and you, Thank Matt. you very much for joining us. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Good on you, mate. Thanks. Cheers.